In the Middle Ages, if you were sick, then bloodletting was the only thing a doctor did. Pinching off some blood of you, feeding it up, and you must get better. The, the, use, the doctors used this blood to smell it, to taste it, to feel it, and to look at it. So the doctor was using his own senses to diagnose the, the, the sickness that you would have. Was that a strange idea? Well, not that bad at all, because the blood is taking oxygen and food to all the living cells in your, in your, in your body, but it also takes back all the um, litter and, and garbage that comes off the cells. The blood has a good uh, interaction with your lungs, because it's taken the oxygen from the air from the lungs, and it's bringing back the CO2 and other waste gases from the blood. So in fact, if your blood smells, then your breath will smell. Any disease, any sickness you have will affect some organ or some cells in your body. And those cells will produce toxins. And those toxins are mostly gases that being exhaled in your breath. For a long time, it was believed that there are 200 chemicals in your exhaled breath, but recent scientific research has demonstrated there are over 2,500 chemicals in your exhaled breath. And those chemicals hold information. They can be used as markers, as markers for uh, finding out to, to diagnose what kind of disease you may have. So those medieval doctors weren't that bad at all, were they? Again, novel doctors, the modern doctors, they still use a lot of uh, medical tooling to look at your body, to feel your body, to, to, to feel the blood pressure and to measure the temperature and uh, to measure. They can even have, make pictures to look at your body. So why not make a device that could smell your exhaled breath? Because if there are so much information in the exhaled breath, couldn't we use it for diagnosis? And couldn't we use it for diagnosis for many diseases? It can. So we made uh, a, a project. We are developing a, a, a project that was uh, called an electronic nose. And the electronic nose was primarily used to sniff out bad air, bad odors in the atmosphere, in the port of Rotterdam, in the port of Amsterdam. We are applying it. And we use it to detect where sources of nuisance are and how the nuisance, if there is a malodorous emission, how does this emission spread in the atmosphere? So we said, suddenly on the internet, I got an, uh, a contact from, from the Amsterdam uh, Medical Center, AMC, that they were developing an electronic nose for uh, diagnosis of asthma and COPD. And I said, well, this is something we should co-create. All the experience that we have in the environmental world, couldn't that be reused and could we not work together. They are the medical doctors working on their um, diagnosis and on their, their own field. We have a lot of in, uh, knowledge on, on how uh, electronics work and how uh, it works in, in, in the environment, so why can't we work together? So we did, and now we co-create. We have cooperations with this uh, Amsterdam uh, Medical Center, the AMC, and before I go on with telling a little bit more on how this electronic nose works, I will show you a little bit uh, how does our own smell work. Yeah? What's the sense of smell? The sense of smell is you have your nose, your nose is connected to your brain, and all the odorants that are in the air, and every time we breathe in, the odorants will attach to the receptors in our nose. And under the receptors, the odorants will react, interact with the, the and form a kind of pattern. And this pattern is transferred to your brain, and you have an, a database, what called the olfactive memory, where all the odors that you have ever experienced in your life are stored. It's not the odors, it's the patterns of the odors. So if you ever have the, uh, smelled the smell of an, um, an, an orange, then the pattern of this smell is stored in your brain. So next time you get the same scent again, even if you're blindfolded or if, if it's pitch dark, you will even get, your brain will know, oh, now I'm 
recalling a pattern, and this, uh, that pattern is referred to uh, the smell of uh, this orange. Often it's not the orange itself, the smell, but it's the, an associative memory. You remembered the emotion when you first smelled it. So what you smell is not naphthalene, you smell mothballs. And you don't smell mothballs, you smell the scent when you were playing in your uh, grandmother's uh, bedroom and, and you can re all these memories get back to you. If you had uh, the smell of, of uh, baked bread or you have the smell of uh, nice things, you will always remember, you always get back to your childhood when you have the smell of a nice apple pie. So this is how the, uh, the brain processes. The brain processes all the data, all the odorants are transferred to patterns and these patterns are referred with other patterns. So pattern recognition is an important thing. I just put a little electronic nose here. On top of the electronic nose, on top of the device, you see four sensors. And these four sensors, they interact with all kinds of reactive gases. So among others, they will react with odors that are airborne. So if there is an odor here, if I could breathe into this device, it would make from all the signals, it would make patterns. And these patterns, that's so. In fact, this little device is the electronic nose, and this device is the connection between the nose and the brain. The brain is connected via an, in fact, it's nothing more or less than, an, uh, than an, a cell phone. So the data is transferred to a big computer, and it's on this big computer, the data is processed and compared with the data that uh, is read from this census and is stored in the database. And if a pattern has been found, then the Enos thinks, hey, this is a pattern that I know before. And this is the pattern I have been trained. This is the pattern of a bad odor, petrol odor. Or it could also be the pattern of somebody who is sniffing out and is suffering from tuberculosis or is suffering from COPD or suffering from lung cancer or suffering. So we can train the ENOS, we can train the system to build it, uh, to create a database and the database is uh, stored somewhere on a central computer. It's stored in a cloud. And this cloud we call the breath cloud. And the breath cloud is nothing more than doctors all over the world enter the database. They feed the database with all diagnosed uh, patients. The coming years there will be 3,000 children diagnosed in Amsterdam and uh, in Birmingham and in other uh, cities where we are all together. These 3,000 children will be diagnosed for a couple of years and there will be patterns found in these breath, exhaled breath of these uh, 3,000 patients that will help us to create this building, this database. And other the nice thing comes because it's in the clouds. So when we have, once we learned and we increased and we taught this database how to recognize uh, the smells, there's only a few dollars of uh, electronics needed. And there's doctors all over the world can feed it. So it becomes a, a tool, a very cheap tool with a very skilled database high-end databases that are created with fed with uh, data from people from all over the world and it becomes uh, feasible for people in for doctors in less privileged areas of the world where you can have much easier diagnosis of all kind of diseases tuberculosis is one of the diseases that we are focusing on right now because tuberculosis is a big issue a third of the world population is affected with di with tuberculosis that's quite a lot isn't it here in South Africa, it's a real issue. So we are dying to get together with, with universities and uh, with, with people, doctors from, from this country to cooperate and to co-create with us how we can make such technology available for making the world a little better. Crawling to the moon if we have to, but make it win here. I thank you very much. Thank you.